That's right. Back on the Dr. Quack podcast today. Here we go. Yeah, buddy. Let me tell you what a great draft we got getting ready to go down here. Oh, my God. On the Dr. Quack podcast, we have the NFL draft coming up. That is today. I love the NFL draft. Let me tell you, I love it because it's one of my favorite holidays in the NFL. You know, you have that. We are, you know, the players that are in college, the top prospects, who's going to what team, you know, who's going to be traded. The only other holiday that's like this to me in the NFL is is Black Monday, the day after the season when about roughly seven coaches tend to get fired. I, I love it. That's right. Yeah, it's time to see. I'm not talking about these guys today, but you know I'm watching them, so go Pats. But anyways, so the NFL draft here, I mean, it's it's pretty big. You know, now in Nashville, you know, a lot of big players coming out. And I'm just going over roughly about the first seven picks because right there, those are the most intriguing to me. You know, I think you're going to see some trades after that, of course, but this is always important. I mean, number one. Number one, you know, in the draft, everybody says, you know, Kyle Murray, Kyle Murray, he is the lock on this. He should be the one that should be picked on this. You know, what's that mean for Josh Rosen? I mean, that, that's another question. Does he get traded? Does he not get traded? Does he stay the starting quarterback? You know, in my opinion, this is what I think should happen. I think Joey Bosa, and look, anybody who knows me, I am not an Ohio State fan. In fact, I probably hate them. I just, I feel like they're always overrated. Just my opinion, you know, just never really liked them. You know, always seem to cheer Michigan over Ohio State. Sorry, Ohio State fans, but that's how I roll, you know. But I think Joey Bosa, defensive end, I I think he should be the number one overall pick. I do think they should keep Josh Rosen. I think, you know, he's had one bad year and he was on arguably the worst team in the NFL, you know, but that, that's what I'm hoping happens. This is why if that does happen, if for some reason Kyler Murray does not get selected number one, then you're going to see a chain of events. You're going to see a huge chain of events because at number two is San Francisco. San Francisco has the second pick and you look at them, right? They got Jimmy Garoppolo. They just got, you know, they, 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 they uh, traded for him, and he's going to be their franchise guy, allegedly. You know, most likely, they, they him and Shanahan like each other. But there's so many teams below that would sign Kyler Murray, that would trade up. You know, look, look at the next four picks here. The Jets, the Raiders, the Bucks, and the Giants. All four of them, all four of them would go up and possibly take, you know, Kyler Murray. The Jets, not so much. They've already got their quarterback. But you could see them trying to move up to get somebody else, too. You know, they're kind of in there, but not really. It's really the big three. They're the Raiders, the Bucks, and the Giants. Because, I mean, the Raiders, they keep talking about Derek Carr. Is he the quarterback of the future? You know, is he their franchise quarterback? For right now, he is. That could be five minutes later. could be a change. You know, the Bucks, Jameis Winston. You know, he's getting paid, what, I think it's 24 or $27 million, something like that, over the next year, and they may not want to pay that. There's that opportunity. And then, of course, the New York Giants. Eli Manning, is he going to, you know, be the quarterback for the next couple of years? Is he, Are they going to try to draft it this year, the franchise quarterback, to replace Eli Manning? You know, it, it's a big deal on that part. I mean, they already got rid of Odell Beckham. You know, his his top-notch receiver. So, I mean, what's going to happen? This is my prediction here. I think, you know, Ohio, Ohio State, Joey Bosa is going to Arizona. That This is my prediction. If that happens, then the rest of this here kind of falls down. I think whoever takes number two is going to be Kyler Murray. And if I had to be a betting man, I'm going to say the Raiders. I'm going to say the Raiders swap picks. Okay? I'm going to say the Raiders swap picks with the San Francisco 49ers. In compensation, and you know, there'll be a little extra, of course, probably a third or fourth round or second round or something, you know. So, there, there you go. I think the Raiders move up to the two. The Jets, I think they're going to go right there with um, Josh Allen over there from uh, Kentucky. 
they need a good edge rusher. They they you know they have a, already built their offense a little bit. Le'Veon Bell there. They're going to need a strong defense. So yeah, I would think he might be the guy there at three. You know, as I look down my board here, here we go. Number four, yep. It'll be the San, the San Francisco 49ers. I do think they go after Quentin Williams over their defensive tackle. I, I do think they're going to go after him. Um, number five, I, I think because we were talking about, you know, Kyler Murray already gone. You know, they're probably going to go stick on defense. It's going to be a heavy defense in the first ten rounds. I really, I mean, first ten uh, picks, rather. Buccaneers, Devin White, I'll say linebacker LSU. I mean, they need a strong linebacker presence. That's probably one of the things they absolutely need outside of, you know, if they're going to keep Winston or not, that's the other big thing in my opinion. And the Giants here, the Giants, I don't think they trade up. I just They might, but I think they're going to go one more year with Manning it probably, even though a lot of people are like, why are you doing that? So and the other big thing they need, they need D-line. So probably Ed Oliver, defensive tackle. And number seven, um, Jacksonville Jaguars, and this is always just, you know, I mean, you got Nick Foles down there now, so he's going to need some weapons. And this guy here, TJ Hawkerson out of Iowa, I mean, you already look at his uh, stats here. He is definitely a great pass blocker and a great receiver. So he's going to be your guy probably going early in, in the top ten. That's, that's what I'm thinking on my top seven there. I don't see Kyler Murray going number one. If that happens, I'm telling you, it's going to be chaos. And, I, and that's what I'm hoping for. But, I mean, everybody, a lot of people are pointing at saying, yeah, it is going to happen. Let's see what's happening. I can't wait for that. You know, also, here you go. Next on the agenda, let me tell you, something else happened yesterday. Something else really awesome happened yesterday. Cobra Kai Season 2 came out. If you've never seen that show, let me tell you, because a lot of people go, hey, I'm going to get Hulu and I'm going to get Netflix, and I'm going to get Roku. Well, there's another thing out there called YouTube Premium, right? And, of course, another channel. They make YouTube Originals, you know, and they do have some good stuff on there. This one in particular, Cobra Kai, is pretty much based off of, excuse me, this is basically based off of, uh, the Karate Kid, 20 years later. So you remember Daniel LaRusso over there, Johnny Lawrence fighting in the All-Valley Karate Tournament, you know. And, of course, LaRusso won. 20 years later, you get to see where they're at. If you have not watched Season 1, I suggest you do so. Season 2, right now, I'm on the 6th episode. I imagine when I finish this, I will continue watching until, um, you know, later on today when the draft and everything else happens. So it's going to be a couple hours, so I'll watch that. Can't wait to see what happens at the end of this. I'm not going to spoil season two, but already explosive in my opinion. Also, Cheese Dick Movie of the Week. A lot of you do not know this. Some of the viewing audience does because they were actually involved. About 60 people were invited to vote on the cheesiest movie of all time. The Cheese Dick Movie Tournament. You know, and... I got to tell you, we actually had a finish in it. The finals of the Cheese Dick Movie Tournament. The loser was Mr. Nanny. And it got beat by this week's Cheese Dick Movie of the Week. Big Top Pee Wee. Yes, Pee Wee Herman ran a farm and a circus came in town. It, it, it was cheesy as, you know, you know what. It was pretty damn cheesy. But all I can say... Is yeah, check that out. See, see if uh, you rem if you remember it, then yeah, you, you already know. But if you haven't watched it, if you're really looking for a really crappy movie, kind of just to veg out to and just go, what am I really watching? That's the one. That's the one. So yeah, my final topic here. I know I'm going a little quick here today. I'm doing just a small podcast here, probably you know about 15 minutes, but. I got some fan mail because I asked for it. See, I asked for fan mail. And now I got questions to answer. So, here we go. I got my notes here. See, I got my notes. So, yeah, if you could go back and back to when you were a teenager, would you change anything? You know, I, people always say, do you, you know, what would you change about your life? And I'm almost like nothing. You know, because nothing I would change. 
Because if I was a teenager, if I would have done things differently, I may not have been where I'm at today. You know, it may not have led me down the same path. And I'm very happy. You know, I got a great woman. I got great kids. You know, I got a good job. You know, so I kind of like what I do and I like where I'm at. You know, but yeah, see, that's why I wouldn't want to change it. Because, you know, they can say, oh, yeah, I become rich. And then next thing you know, I don't have any friends, you know. Love my friends, you know. Y'all know, y'all, you people out there. Yeah, I love my camera here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry little goofy here i've had a couple um coffees in me today which brings my next one starbucks or dunkin donuts see that all depends okay starbucks i like the iced coffees the ones that you get straight out of like the freezer at morofo or wherever else you know sheets yeah sheets that's a pennsylvania thing you don't see them in maryland you see wawa in maryland you know educating there but, yeah, I mean, the Dunkin' Donuts, I always like, if I go to actual Dunkin' Donuts, I love their coffees over Starbucks going to their coffees. But frozen drinks and, uh, you know, like the mocha frappuccino, yeah, there's a big word. I like Starbucks a lot, too. Okay. When I move to a different climate, um, probably, you know, I, I it, the weather gets on my nerves all the time because it's either 800 degrees or... Or it's 20 degrees. Either way, it's like, man, can everything just be comfortable? Can I just have a nice slight breeze out here at about 60, 65? Where I can have my shorts not be too hot but not be freezing my balls off. You know, that, that's all I'm asking, you know. That only happens for about two weeks out of the year, at least in the first half of the year. The second half, you might get another week or two. Most of the time, no, it goes straight from, you know, 800 degrees, like I said, to negative 20. So it just doesn't shock me there. This was an interesting question here. This was um, thoughts on non-gas vehicles. So gas prices are rising, you know. Whoops, sorry about that. Getting buzzed. People only calling in. So, yeah, thoughts on uh, non-gas vehicles versus electric vehicles. I mean, if you ask me, I, I like my gas vehicles because you know i love performance cars i love camaros i love you know corvettes can't drive much of the corvettes though just because they're lower to the ground they always hurt my back but i like i like power you know but i get it there's a lot of you know gas prices going up you're talking over three an hour three dollars um i'm sorry three dollars a gallon you know and it's a lot of money and who knows it keeps climbing you know, so electric vehicles are starting to come in. I have seen manufacturers where they have put out prototypes where they're all going to be driving themselves. And see, that's not for me. I don't like that. I mean, I'm not going to feel safe having a vehicle drive itself. I've seen like body parts, you know, where they put different body parts on people and all of a sudden it was controlling them. The arm was moving. You're like, hey, why is it doing this? Same thing could happen to a car. It could just say, I'm going to control you and I'm going to crash in that wall. No, I, I, that's something that I don't trust. You know, I don't feel that it's something that I would want to do, you know. And then they're talking about flying cars here later. That's a whole other topic, which, look, I, I'd be out of the car business. I, I, You know, some people cannot drive in general, and I can imagine some of you guys flying. Whoo, God. It'd be like the Jetsons, except there'd be car crashes. That would be scary. So, here we go. If you could have one more conversation with someone, who would it be? You know, th this one, this one's kind of wild here. And out of all people that I I've met in life, you know, and most people are going to say some family member, you know, including me. I would probably say my grandfather. My grandfather, he was the one that inspired me to get into professional wrestling. Um, he was always the one that took me places a lot of times when I was a kid. You know, we, we would go bowling and we would go to this place called the doggy bag you know which is like a small restaurant but they always had pinball see who remembers pinball come on that was back in the 80s you know it was great times um you know but he used to do a lot of things and i used to like hang out a lot of times with my grandfather you know that would probably be the one person that i would talk to and here you go the final question in the mailbag here my thoughts on Alexa, is it helpful or is it a spy? That is the quote unquote there. I think it's both. <laughs> I'm sure right now somebody's listening to me over at NSA or, or somewhere else going, what is this guy talking about? Who knows? I, I don't know. But, you know, it's helpful for great information. I mean, 
You, you could ask it anything. You could ask it, who is the greatest quarterback of all time? And it does not even know. That's what makes me laugh, you know. But anything that replies to the internet, like if you wanted to know something, it would tell you. And plus it always makes jokes, which some of my favorites, you know, that was funny for about five minutes. But there you go, folks. There's the end of my um, podcast here. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Next week, I'm going to actually have some special guests on here. So stay tuned. I kind of, you know, threw the schedule a little bit because I've been a little rushed this week. But I wanted to make sure that I, you know, put one out here. And I wanted to talk about the NFL draft, really, and Cobra Kai Season 2. It was really awesome. But thank you so much for tuning in. Click like, subscribe. Check out my Facebook page. If you look up the DQ 911 you will find my page. All right, folks. Thank you and have a good day.